I'd like to read two poems uh, from this issue by two uh, different poets that actually one's at the beginning and one's at the end and one uh, speaks to art and one speaks to revolution. Uh, this first poem is by Ricardo Zamorano Baez, who is a young uh, Mexican poet that uh, I've been working with for the last few years, uh, possessed of immense talent. Uh, his works appeared in American Poetry Review and Packing House Review and a few other small places. Uh, he's a poet that came up here um, from Sinaloa, Mexico to Fresno. Yo, hold on. And um, to learn the language. Uh, and I think pretty much uh, he's done it pretty well and he writes primarily in English and he's a, he's a young poet and a young man and uh, is possessed of a great irony and a, a brilliant talent. This is called Ars Poetica and he's, uh, he's writing about his muse. I remember the moonlit night you walked into my room naked. I was 16 and when your hand slid under my clothes I ran out to the lemon trees. What did I know about the mechanics of desire? When I finally became brave enough to go back to my room, you were not there anymore. And for months, I pictured you in my bed, my books, the bodies of young women, and even in the mannequins placed outside the stores and adorned only in an embarrassment of gloves and jewels. For years, I looked for you in the streets, the schools, in cafes, public libraries, restaurants, hospitals, and of course, whorehouses. <laughs> now that I've found you, I sit at my desk and listen to you pace around the house, but you don't let me touch you. I enter each room whispering your name, thinking that you might have grown ashamed of your body throughout the years. I turn off the lights and lie down on the bed next to you and tell you how your sister did not mind Neruda passing his tongue over her body all night long, about how your cousins would wrap their legs around Lorca and Vallejo, the way morning glories bundle up around the lemons, and how over the years I have learned from these men how to make your body sing, and the shapes that you would like to be, but still, you don't let me touch you. Can't you just take off your clothes and let me do the work? <laughs> this next poem is by one of my favorite poets, um, John Weinberg. John uh, was in school many years ago with Tim Sheehan and myself. This was right after the Punic Wars. Um, we had sold the elephants and uh, come back across to Europe. Um, John, is a John is Estonian. And uh, this poem has a lot of resonance uh, given what's happening uh, today in the Ukraine uh, with uh, Russia just invading again as, as they have, well, forever, uh, at least for all modern history. <clears throat> John's uh, Father was a doctor, his mother was a nurse, his father died uh, in the war. And he was born in Germany uh, right after the war as uh, his mother was trying to escape to the United States and what she was trying to escape from was of course the Russians who in the late 40s as you know took over, uh, just marched in with their tanks and took over Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania and anyone in the neighborhood they, they could uh, bully. Uh, John, uh, terribly enough, uh, this morning I got an email from him, very stoically said, I'm just out of the hospital five days, I uh, had a bypass. And so he's got four or five weeks of pretty painful recovery, but um, hopefully he comes through that well. He has a new book coming called uh, Angels at Bus Stops from Lynx House Press. It'll be out in the fall. And this is called An Estonian Kitchen. The rye bread is black and sour as a broken-backed peasant's soul. 
and the iced buttermilk is cold enough to shock the hair off a skinny seal. Under the only permissible light, my mother is boiling knives to scald off the tattoo tooled into her father's neck. Soon she will have to cinch up his mouth with a belt rigged to the tightest buckle hole. The goutweed sleeps under a mound of snow, bullets ricochet off the frost glazed alder. When Uncle Sass shoulders open the door with a bucket of eels anchoring each arm. And even, though, and even though it too is forbidden, we toss our gloves to applaud our passing hunger, to stir the leftover fat under a new fire and brine the bones into potato soup. The smokehouse will stand as a cathedral if spring were ever able to hobble in. In the afterglow of the night bombings, my sister wakes up to set the eels free. They wriggle themselves around her ankles, black ropes of electricity stunning her January legs. For two days, no one speaks. One was found drowned in a vat of honey, another ice welded so tightly to the dwarf tree it could have been a sauna's branch twin. Most were spied in the Baltic shores, but never in pairs. Soldiers were turning them over with their boots, their bayonets embedded in the sand, ten goose-stepped paces short of the sea. 